So Jeremy Lefebvre from Financial Education just made a video about Meet Kevin a few hours ago and I was actually very surprised in this video. His rhetoric completely flipped on Meet Kevin. So let's go back a little bit. A few weeks ago, Meet Kevin sold his $20 million stock portfolio and cryptocurrency and at the time everyone thought he was stupid, everyone was pissed off at him for you know misguiding them essentially. And Jeremy, who is one of his friends, who is always on the Millennial Money podcast with him, was one of the first ones to just start bashing him on YouTube. And he's like, oh, you know, Meet Kevin has no idea what he's doing. He's inexperienced. Uh, he got rich too quick. A lot of things that a jealous person would say, you know what I mean? So it was very surprising for me when a few hours ago, Jeremy put out a video um, kind of validating what Meet Kevin did. So for those that don't know, Meet Kevin, when the stock market dipped like crazy yesterday, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but when the stock market dipped like crazy, Meet Kevin bought the dip, and by the end of the day, just one day, he put in about $7.7 .7 million, and by the end of the day, he was up 10%. Folks, that's over $700,000 in one day, which is insane. So in Jeremy's video that he posted a few hours ago, he kind of said, you know, meet Kevin. Uh, I heard that he's back in the market. Um, a lot of his money, he put a lot of his money back in the market. And, you know, he's just an active fund investor, similar to Kathy Wood and a lot of these other hedge funds where um, you're always just on the lookout of what's happening in the next month, the next three months, the next year, and change your strategy accordingly. Because similar to meet Kevin, Kathy Wood just sold her whole stake of Palantir. Um, out of nowhere and I'm, I'm not even sure if she gave a big reason for it to be honest and Jeremy's just you know bashing her the same thing saying that oh she's gonna have to answer for this uh, it's not gonna be a good look he's gonna get a lot of trash for that and you know I just thought it was kind of weird how he went from meet Kevin has no idea what he's doing he's inexperienced he just stick to YouTube and real estate to all of a sudden just, oh, you know, validating his style. Like, yeah, we got some day traders, some swing traders, and then we got some long-term investors. Meet Kevin just seems like he's more of a swing trader. And in a way, it kind of validated what Meet Kevin was doing. And, you know, in a time where most of us, including myself, um, we're probably down well over 10% in our account since, you know, the last few weeks um, around the time when Meet Kevin sold. And here Meet Kevin is, he sold out, and he's up 10% in one day. And that just makes you think that, you know, maybe Meet Kevin in this particular moment made the right choice. You know, we, we got to be able to admit that because he was he did see that the market was going to drop more. He sold out and then he bought back in at a decent time when there's a lot of panic in the market. And now he's up. And now, you know, I think I think now in retrospect, his move looks a lot better. And Jeremy should have the humility to say that, hey, you know, Meet Kevin did a good job. Now, time will only tell if Meet Kevin did truly make the right decision because we don't know. The market could drop even further. We could we could just crash during this war. No one knows what's going to happen. But at the moment, I think Meet Kevin did make the right decision. And it's kind of interesting to me that um, Jeremy would change his rhetoric so much overnight. And it kind of makes me wonder, is he actually just saying things for views? Um, now, go back a few weeks ago when the market crashed, Everyone was hating on Meet Kevin, and what did Jeremy do? He was just hating on him as well. Now, a few weeks later, when the rhetoric is slightly changing, when the market's starting to go up, people are thinking, oh, you know, maybe Meet Kevin made the right move. And what does Jeremy do? Uh, he validates his style and says, you know, Jeremy, uh, Meet Kevin just has a different style. And, you know, it's just, yeah, I just don't like that style of, um, of going with the flow. Like, have your own opinions, man. But regardless, I just wanted to... Uh, shed my input onto that, but let's talk about something more important. Let's talk about yesterday. So yesterday morning, Russia announced that they're going to be invading Ukraine. And, you know, at that announcement, our stock market crashed pretty bad. I think the futures were down 2 to 3%, which is insane. And the market was horrible. It was a bloodbath until uh, President Biden came on and gave a live press conference and I think he looked pretty good in the press conference. And the reason I say this is because the stock market um, responded very well to it. He came out looking strong and bold and basically said, you know, we're putting all these crazy sanctions on Russia. It's totally going to stop, uh, stop them in our opinion. And, you know, to that aspect, Russia's stock market apparently dropped 40% in one day, which is insane. 
Now, if you guys didn't watch the press conference, I think it was pretty good. It's not that long. It's pretty short, maybe like 20 minutes. The last like seven-ish minutes are all Q&A. And I think there were some really good questions that were asked. And one of the questions, interestingly, was, um, are you going to call on China to, you know, help us out or something? And basically, President Biden just said, um, I am not prepared to answer that question as of right now, which... I was kind of surprised at that. Like, what does that comment even mean? Um, are they talking to China or they're not going to talk to China? I, I'm not sure. It was, it was definitely interesting. But um, to that point, so after, after you know, we, uh, the United States had our press conference and, you know, Russian market tanked, our market went up. I think we ended the day pretty, pretty well in the spy and everything. I've been hearing some mixed news um, and I'm not sure what to make of it. And I'm not sure if you guys have heard similar, similar stuff from, you know, last night, this morning. So from some people, I'm hearing that Russia has successfully taken over parts of Ukraine already. They've already infiltrated. They're there. But then there's other folks that are, you know, saying that, oh, um, Ukraine's doing well. They already shot down a bunch of Russian airplanes. And then the Russian military is looking so lost. They're like, there's like a video circulating around where the Russian military is like asking for directions and stuff like that. And then apparently I saw an article saying that the Ukraine president said that Putin wants to, you know, um, uh, sit down and discuss, which to me, it seems like they want to sit down, discuss an agreement or something, which I was like, oh, OK, um, which one's true? Is Russia taking over? Or is Ukraine, you know, doing well? I'm not sure. But then there was something interesting that I saw. Um, it was on Bloomberg Business this morning, and it's that. China has reached out to Russia to talk to them urgently, which that could be a little bit scary for me personally. And the reason I say this is because China and Russia are two countries that are not a big fan of the United States. And, you know, just them getting together, you don't want two superpowers. Um, well, okay, Russia is not a superpower, but China is a superpower, you know, and but Russia is not a lightweight either. You don't want a superpower and a heavyweight to get together um, because it's, it just doesn't make, it's not good for the United States. It's not in our best interest. So that's something that I found interesting. Um, I, I think in the past, we'd always want Russia and China to be distant, but now it seems like we're kind of pushing them together, which is not safe. Uh, so I'm kind of interested to see where that goes. But overall, I mean... I know there's a lot of people out there that are just looking for ways uh, to use this situation to make more money, whether you're looking for stocks to buy in like the oil industry or the defense industry and stuff like that. And, you know, all I want to say is that people should be cognizant of the fact that apart from, you know, money and all these financial markets, that war is real. And there are kids out there that are that are probably suffering Um <laughs> and there's real people dying out there. And I just don't want us to be totally disconnected from, from a lot of those victims. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, this is real. There are people suffering. There's kids that are hiding. There's like horrible videos out there circulating. So just be cognizant of that, okay? And, and be thankful. Um, with that being said, guys, that's my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.